Let's now talk about what's happening in South Korea. Now, if you have been following the developments, you would know by now about the doctor strike there. Basically, thousands of medical interns and residents have stayed off the job since early last week. 9,000 to be precise. And why is that? To mark their protest against a government plan. What's the plan? To increase medical school admissions by about 65%. Why? According to the government, adding more doctors is required to deal with South Korea's rapidly aging population. Basically, the authorities say more staff is the need of the hour to increase healthcare services in the remote areas and also meet the growing demands of one of the world's most rapidly aging societies. By the way, just for context here, the country's current doctor to patient ratio is among the lowest in the developed world. And why are those on strike against the plan? Because they say universities cannot handle so many new students. They argue that the plan would not resolve a chronic shortage of doctors in some key but low-paying areas like pediatrics and emergency departments. Striking doctors have said they worry doctors faced with increased competition would engage in overtreatment, burdening public medical expenses. The young doctors want that their pay and working conditions should be the priority rather than the government's plan to boost the number of physicians. Meanwhile, the walkouts have severely impacted the operations of hospitals. There have been numerous cancellations of surgeries and other treatments. And now, the government has given junior doctors four days to end their walkouts or they could face prosecution or have their medical licenses suspended. That's right. The wise health minister has said that the government will not seek any disciplinary action against the striking doctors if they return to work by Thursday. That is by the end of this month, the 29th of February. And if they return to the hospitals they had left by then, they will not be held responsible for any damages caused by their walkouts. Adding that those who don't meet the deadline will be punished with a minimum three-month suspension of their medical licenses and face further legal steps like investigations and possible indictments. Under South Korea's medical law, the government can issue back-to-work orders to doctors and other medical personnel when it sees grave risks to public health. Now, here's the thing. Doctors are considered essential workers in South Korea and are restricted by law from striking. Of course, that is understandable. Not allowing essential workers to be on strike would be the practical thing to do, right? Because they serve as the backbone of a country's functioning and are the providers of essential services. Which in turn begs the question, what should they do if they have to make their voice heard? Not allowing them to not be at work is fine. But what can they possibly do to register their protest if they have demands? if they are unhappy or want the government to sit up and take note. By not allowing them to be on strike, do these essential workers end up being vulnerable because they are not allowed to go on strikes in order to, in order to mark their protests or demand what they want? Or should they be allowed to be on strike at the cost of the way in which their absence from work would impact the people, those who depend on their services? Or should things just not be allowed to reach a point where they feel like their voice is not heard to the extent that they feel the need to not go into work in order to make their voice heard? What do you think about this? Write to us and let us know. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the updates on the move.